jurors. I need you to report and report now to the Dominican Republic. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Queen's Supreme Court is bringing the seat to the Dominican Republic. July 12th through the 16th, we are going on an all-inclusive food, drink, activities, and lodging, baby, to the Dominican Republic. Get your tickets on www.wetravel.com, baby. That's www.wetravel.com. Well, look for the link in the bio. But, child, honey, we are going to have an amazing time. Now, all you got to do is get your passport and get your plane ticket. We got everything else, girl. Tickets are available now. Don't waste no time, baby. Don't waste no time. Child, July 12th through the 16th, the Queen's Supreme Court in the Dominican Republic. Hold the car. 757, are you ready to have a good time? Well, it's going down. Good time is going to be so good. At the Broadway, Thursday, March 21st, live, live from the ATL, is T.S. Madison and the Queen's Supreme Court with Funky Daniva. Live from Love and Hip Hop and Candy Burr's online show. Miss Daniva, give them the details. Come party with me, T.S. Madison and the Queen's Supreme Court at the Broadway nightclub in Norfolk, Virginia. Told you. Hosted by comedian Fat Baby. Special guest performances by Shafan Kaya and Miss Parker. Get your tickets at Eventbrite or visit www.mzzparker.com Hello! Tickets are going fast for this exclusive event, so get yours now on Eventbrite.com or by calling 757-359-3862 New York City! Oh my God! Baby, when I tell you that the Queen's Supreme Court is bringing the seat to your city. And honey, we not just giving you one day. Girl, we giving you a whole weekend, baby. Me, Funky Dr. Ross, and the real Miss Sophia, baby. Child, we coming there for a two-day extravaganza. Girl, get on Eventbrite right now. www.eventbrite.com and get your motherfucking tickets, bitch. For Easter weekend, bitch, with the Queen Supreme Court. That's April 21st and April 22nd. Sunday, come have brunch with me and King David. And Monday, come on out and judge these cases at the live show, bitch. Listen, don't beat me there, bitch. Beat me there. <laughs> Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, bring it to the stage. Our head judge, he's an all time. Hold on, he's an all time guy. Y'all give it up for Miss Mary. Yes, he is. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, but hold on, hold on, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, hold on, hold on. Cause I I I I I, I got a uh, quiet in the court, quiet in the court. I got a bone to pick with Miss Mary. Cause let me tell you something. See, you a young girl, you might not know better. But when Kaya was around your house talking about me like a dog, I about came around there and whooped your ass and your mammy ass. Okay, okay. I almost whooped your ass and your mammy ass. And you know what? I miss Texas. And I heard your little words you sat back for me. But baby, I'm gonna um I'm gonna lay hands on you one way. But before I lay my hands on you, <laughs> and 
now, since I shocked you, I'm going to give you something to help you. Yes, God, Miss Mary though gave me that Hennessy, baby. She say after she don't shock me, she gonna help me. Y'all give it up one more time for Miss Mary. <laughs> DJ, go ahead on and pump a beat for Miss Mary, baby. Give her that titty mouth. Give her that queen. Hey! Go get up, baby. Niggas don't live that long. Them legs is not. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our show would not be available for you guys out there in the lands, all across the lands, without our sponsor. Our first sponsor tonight, I need something on my contact. You got a you got a college degree. Can you read our first sponsor? Baby, not just one. I got three of them: a BA in economics, a MBA in finance, and a master's of accounting. But. <clears throat> That being said, one of them qualifies me to read a paragraph. And with that, now, Delali, Delali, Delay, the next one. Oh, them girls didn't pay their money. Number two, the next sponsor has come with some really amazing things going on in the entertainment industry and in real estate. Sherry Buchanan is an executive producer and licensed real estate broker. She's not only buying and selling properties for celebrities, but she also has a partnership with a company that will repair your credit. We look like we got the bad credit holes in here. All the holes that was waiting on their income tax after the government shut down, make some noise. Yes, B-A-B-Y-M-A-M-A. -M -A -M -A. Sherry believes that everyone should be able to purchase at least one home, a building, or a business. She believes that everyone should own a piece in their city. She lives in Atlanta, but is from Chicago. She is a member of the National Association of Realtors and works with Realtors Nationwide. So it don't matter where you stay, she can help. Yes, Sherry has over 20 years experience in real estate too. If you fucking a drug dealer or you scam, she can help you too. So you need to get with her and her team at Universal Realty on IG and Facebook or at share underscore simply 360 on IG or you can email her at real estate at simply c360.com. Shouts out to Sherry Buchanan. All right, that's Chicago's own Sherry Buchanan. Chicago, make some noise in this motherfucker! Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time coming. We have, we have been promising. Chicago, y'all been watching us go to every city. We are finally here, Chicago. We are here. Maddie, I gotta say one thing. Y'all wanna know what's funny, Chicago? Gucci rocks. Look your head out this window. My very first booking as Funky Dineva, they booked me in Chicago for $300. Scott, AKA DJ Gucci Rocks was the DJ. That was nine years ago. And to look at where I am now and that high yellow nigga is DJing what I'm doing right now. Now he was supposed to let me fuck back then, okay? But bitch, I'm finna cash in that Gucci coupon tonight, okay? You remember that DJ Gucci Rocks? Is you single or nah? I don't care, cause I don't stay here. <laughs> yeah. DJ Gucci Ross, you better not give down even none if I can't have it. <laughs> and y'all know Joe sitting next to me with this big old dick. What's up, Chicago? Child, we've been trying to get here, but that motherfucking snow been holding us back. So we're going to do this show tonight, and we're going to get the fuck out of here before the snow comes, because it'll start snowing in Chicago in a matter of seconds. 
Huh? It's finna get warm. Oh, it's finna get warm, but it, it's not warm. Finna get. I ain't gonna be standing here on no finna. I'm finna get my ass up out of here. Yes, son. You ready to do it, sis? Speaking of finna get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, somebody ain't getting out of Chicago. First up on the court ledger, the docket. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me yes. <laughs> he had done hurt all those bodies, but his motherfucking ass don't want to confess. <laughs> Bitch, with what R. Kelly going through right now, I know he wished he was still trapped in the closet. <laughs> he hate he got out. But anyway, pay that money. You got to pay that money. You can't be running around here trying to floss and have two girlfriends and then you're not taking care of your baby. You got three babies and a lot of people talking about, hey, R. Kelly, he was just, uh, he was just uh, eight months behind. He owed her $20,000 per month. Now the judge, when he went before the judge, he owed her $191,000. So they said in order for him to catch up, he was going to have to at least come to the courtroom with $161,000. That nigga that went to the court with fifty to sixty thousand dollars, and the judge say, "Oh, nigga, you thought I was playing with you? To the slammer you go!" But he done paid up. Now he still owe Andrea Kelly some more money. But a lot of people they, you know, talking about stop playing R. Kelly music. They should have been stop playing R. Kelly's music, honey. But if he come out with another song, some of y'all motherfuckers gonna be still stepping in the name of love to R. Kelly, cause y'all love y'all some R. Kelly. All right, but before we motherfucking do this, do we have any defense for R. Kelly? Is there any defense for R. Kelly in the house? Do we got a defense attorney for R. Kelly in the house? Who defending? Wait, well, we got a defense. Wait. We got, how many, Sophia, what you? Sophia, no. Sophia, no. Sophia, no. Nah, Miss Sophia, it ain't worth it, Miss Sophia. It ain't worth it. We gonna let him. All right. So we got one defendant for our Kelly one. Okay. First of all. Okay. First of all, the only issue I have that R. Kelly produced a lot of shit with Jennifer Hudson with like um because if, because because y'all muted him, I can't hear my one song from Jennifer Hudson. That's some bullshit. So like for everyone to mute him and everyone to go like that, I feel like y'all need to give him some type of defense. Like I understand, like where you at is that fucking song for Jennifer Hudson when you going through them depression. But then when I thought about it, I'm like, you're probably thinking about where these little girls at too. So then I'm like, damn, you may have to mute that song too. But then again, there's other people that produce stuff. They should, Jennifer Hudson took it off title. That's what I come for with Sprint. That's my only defense, mama. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Look at this camera. Okay. Uh, everybody in here went to high school with a pretty girl that had an older boyfriend. <laughs> See what I mean? That would, that would pick him up, take him downtown to the Grand Lux, to, to the Evergreen Plaza, buying them hair and bones, getting their hair crinkled, and, and nobody questioned it, right? Some of these girls are prospering today. And just so we're clear, every, for every girl that did the documentary, that let's say there are 18 girls that came forward and said, R. Kelly held me hostage, even though I was out buying shoes and jewelry and all that, I was being held hostage. There are 18 girls not getting the publicity because it doesn't fit the media's narrative right now. So for everybody who wants to lock up R. Kelly, you're going to be mad because he has a defense. There are staffers that tell a different story. There are girls who he's been with that tell a different story. They're just not getting the publicity. 
Girl, you stupid. And your jacket plastic, sit down. So here's the thing. When I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, them bitches taught me how to count. From a sheer statistical perspective, he's got 19 counts. Bitch, you guilty of at least four. And that's four too many. Next case. He's guilty in my book. He guilty. And now everybody been wondering if there was some men involved with R. Kelly. I think we just witnessed two men who were involved with R. Kelly. And they standing up here tonight, scared as fuck, thinking R. Kelly got somebody out here watching them. But, we, but before we close out Chicago, this is Mr. Biggs. What the hell is going on? What do you mean, what's going on? Kelly's telling me that you're sleeping with another woman. Well, if you're not sleeping with her, what the hell are you doing with her? Or you could be just creeping with her. Guilty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Robert, uh, in the words of Gail, Robert, <laughs> you're going to the electric chair, bitch. A next case. Now, I want to set this one off, because listen, here's the thing. I did a whole, Jesse Smiley almost ruined my career, because I did a whole video reading you punks, faggots, and sissies. Kaya said, keep y'all punks at Maddie's house. I tried to keep y'all punks out of my house by just saying he made a goddamn fool out of me. Now, they don't indicted this bitch on 16 counts. And like I said, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, them bitches taught me how to count. He might not be guilty of 16, but bitch, you guilty of four. So, with, with that being said, I said, bitch, guilty in next case. Justice Smalley, maybe for me, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Y'all already know the state that our country is in right now, and we need to get Trump out of office immediately. We need to get his rhetoric out of office immediately. Immediately. So for me, even though, listen, Lee Daniels paid me to say this, but, uh, no, 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 honestly, maybe Justin was trying to cause a revolution or something like that, or to incite, you know, our black power in this motherfucker. Black power! Black power! Oh, y'all ain't buying that? Y'all? Okay, hold on, let's see what Sophia's got to say. Well, I've always said, I know y'all gonna say, oh, that bitch flip flop, and she wasn't feeling like that about R. Kelly, but I've always said from the beginning, Jesse, I'm going to stand by him because he's a black gay man. I'm a black gay man. He's an actor. I'm an actress. And if he did that, a lot of the transgender community are upset with him because we know people who have lost their lives because of hate crime. And so a lot of people are upset because he played with something that is real serious to our community. But like I told a lot of my friends, our friends were on a local level. Jesse is on a national level. And if it took Jesse on a national level to bring attention to our friends on a local level, then everybody is getting attention regardless if they were, if God, if they, if the people knew them or not. But now this is something that's gonna be important in this year, in this presidential election, because everybody is talking about these hate crimes. Hate crimes should have been on the book and they should have been solved a long time ago before this Justice Smollett stuff even took place. Like I said earlier, we know girlfriends and boyfriends who have lost their lives. And they, they are sitting on these hate crimes just like they're sitting on the gun laws. So I'm going to stand with Jesse because I know that a lot of people are turning their back against, against Jesse. But I think Jesse can be saved as opposed to R. Kelly. R. Kelly has not admitted not one time to his wrongdoing. And there's evidence and videos and everything. So we're waiting for the court to decide what they're going to do with Jesse. But for me and some of my friends, we're standing with Jesse until the end, because he can be saved. Sister, 
and, and, and I got a very simple sentence. You can never make wrong right. You can't make wrong right. And let me tell you something. Sophia can't stand too long. Those knees is bad. So she won't be standing with Jesse for too much longer. <laughs> 16 counts. The lies you heard. I'll be standing with Jesse today, tomorrow, next week, and next year until the trial is over. And if they find him guilty, I'm going to still stand with Jesse because we got to stop throwing our black men away. Jesse is savable. We can save Jesse. We can save Jesse. I don't care what nobody say. We can save Jesse. I figured out what happened. Y'all know this whole old and see now. She thought we was talking about Reverend Jesse Jackson. We talking about Jesse smiling. Y'all, God bless her soul. She's 73. We just trying to help her until her SSI kick in. Okay, next case. <laughs> well, child, y'all know where Miss Mary stand on this. You see her ass already over there sitting down, child, with, no bad, with those bad knees, baby. So she ain't standing with Jesse no time soon. So for, 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 the, for this case, we find, we find those 16 counts. No, listen, but what about all those white women that been out there screaming about those? Hold on, hold on. Here's the thing about that. Because I get sick and tired when you church going Baptist niggas. Always, our lives only mean something in relation to white people. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all got to stop it with this tired ass argument. Oh, if Harvey Weinstein did it, he didn't get up. The rules have been different for us since slavery. And let me tell you something. White people been pillaging and plundering this country since the beginning of time. I have zero expectation for crackers. I don't. But I hold my black brothers to a different standard. And you should too. I expect absolutely nothing from white people. They've been bankrupt in this country from the beginning of time. Why do y'all expect anything from them? And you need to stop with the, oh, but if it was white, because you make our lives only relevant in relation to them. And no, baby, I'm special with or without them crackers. Amen. That bitch is just talking. She's sitting over here right now with some motherfucking white woman hair on her head. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> Jesse, you guilty. Next case! All right. Next up on the court. I don't even know if I really want to do this. Sophia, go ahead. Let me tell you. You don't want to do this? Craig, you the court reporter. Come on up here. Come on. Tell us about this case. All right. This is a case that happened in Baltimore, which is my hometown. And it was a case of a... a, a a father and daughter that that killed the, the stepmom. They said there was a pan, panhandler that, that killed her, but it came out that it was actually the, the father and the daughter. Oh, we're going to fuck it out, Neva. Let me see. She expects more from our black people. Let me see what she has to say. <laughs> they need to go to jail right next door to Bill Cosby, child molesting ass, put Jussie across the hall, and make R. Kelly sing at all the prison PTA shows. Next case. Oh my God, this is a serious situation, but it's just like, we're this is the day and age that we're living in where people are just doing ridiculous things. And then not only people, our people, stuff like this and snipers and all of this stuff is something that, you know, when they found the suspect, we just knew they were gonna be somebody white or some foreigner. But now white people are committing this, I mean, black people are committing the same crimes that, you know, back in the day were only committed by white people. So we're gonna have to just get ourselves together, start supporting one another. And then I read, uh, I read on the uh, internet the other day, we're gonna have to start supporting black owned businesses and stop giving up on black owned businesses because you have a bad experience. We had a bad experience at Gucci before the last boycott of Gucci, but we are still rocking our Gucci. But we only give the black businesses one chance. If we go to stand and rise as a community, we're going to have to show America that we can stand with each other during the bad times and the good times. Yes. 
Yeah. She done took the murder and done turned this to Gucci. Read her, Dineva. So for all the girls who got a ninth grade education or above, what in the entire hell does Gucci got to do with the Baltimore murder situation? Now, I'll put your hand down because you don't already prove that you don't know what to do with the microphone. So don't loud talk me, bitch. <laughs> Karen Clark Sheard. We just Twinkie Clark. Tamar, so fit. Ta hold on. Hold on. Tamar, Tamar already the read one of those uh the clocks. Was it the clocks? Hold on. I can't I can't let you go off the deep end either. Okay. We on the Baltimore murder situation. Okay. So this is what we gonna we do. This is what we gonna do. Hold on. Tamar hold on. We gonna rule on Baltimore, then we gonna write an amendment in so Sophia could go on her rant about Gucci. So all in favor of sending them Baltimore motherfuckers to life in prison for lying, say aye. aye. Next case. Now you can rant and rave about Gucci. But here's the thing that get me, bitch. Girl, you always been a $10 an hour hoe. You ain't never had no money for Gucci. So now yeah, you was at V103, and Marlo Hampton came up there a couple times and gave you a couple stolen pieces or whatever. You got one little piece of booster. Now you an advocate for uh, Gucci. Let me hear what you got to say about this, Karen Clark, Twinkie, Yvonne Van Zandt, Winfrey. That bitch told y'all about the other three degrees that she got, but she didn't tell y'all about that degree she got in line. And since she called me Karen Clark shit, the safest place. In the whole wide world, it's in the will of God. Oh, but anyway, I was making reference to Gucci because, you know, when it comes to black people, we want to throw our black people away. But when it comes to these white people and these white establishments, we get behind them whether they do us wrong or not. We wait a couple of days and we forgive them. So just like we have to stick, just like y'all stick close to Gucci and, and Farrell Grandma and all these other, Coco Chanel, all these other designers, we have to learn to stick together as a community and grow our community and show white America that we can stick together in good and bad times because right now when we do something Bill Cosby is in jail for the same thing that 10,000 white people did but they still roam in the street why is that R. Kelly and Jesse Smollett they on the television every day for something that white people have did for the last 10 years and also they're talking about uh, who is the new case girl I'm not winning but who is the new case they're talking about <laughs> Michael Jackson yes Michael Jackson, but then the man who owned the New England Patriots got caught in a prostitution ring. Where is that on the news? They announced it and they let it go one time. And now the reports are coming out that the same woman who owned that prostitution ring where they had that, uh, where they caught the New England Patriots uh, owner. Donald Trump is hooked up with that woman as well. Where's all the news on that? They just want to talk about R. Kelly, Justice Smiley, and all these black crimes. They don't want to talk about the white crime. Girl, she's sitting over here mad at white people and these black people done killed their mother and the damn wife. Them bitches is going to jail and they getting the electric motherfucking chair. I won't give a fuck if they She trying to defend it because she was one of them old 15-year-old fast hoes that R. Kelly was pissing on. Look at her skin. Okay. And she had on that goddamn pause the makeup, bitch, and Bill Cosby mistook her for a white woman and slipped the motherfucking Vizine in her drink and fucked the stupid bitch. And she want, didn't want to go up there and tell them peoples that Bill Cosby had stuck a spoon in her ass and that's how he came up with Jell-O Pudding Pop. Oh, Beverly Johnson, oh, Beverly Johnson ass hoe. Oh, Vivica Fox plastic wig wearing ass hoe. Oh, bitch, we ain't defending no child molesters over here. What the fuck wrong with you hoe? How the fuck your pussy set up? You defending child molesters hoe. Oh, what the fuck wrong with you bitch? What church you praying at, Karen Clark? Shit, what the fuck going on? And die me. No, I'm not, I'm not defending them. I'm saying they have to, anybody, Justin Smullett and everybody else that's been a, a, accused of these crimes, any black people, any black person, they have to pay the penalty as well. What I'm saying is we just can't throw them away. Although they pay their penalty, 
with O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson paid the penalty. He got off. A lot of people thought that he was guilty, but still he was acquitted of that crime. But they did not let O.J. live his life because a lot of people felt like he was guilty. So we're going to have to let people pay their crime, pay for the crime that they commit, but still support them. It's just like my mama, whatever I do, whatever man it does, whatever fucking that leave it does, Seven five seven. Are you ready to have a good time? Well, it's going down. Good time is gonna be some good at the Broadway time. Thursday, March twenty first. Live. live from the ATL is T S Madison and the Queen Supreme Court with Funky Daniva. Live from Love and Hip Hop and Candy Burst Online Show. Miss Daniva, give them the details. Come party with me, T S Madison and the Queen Supreme Court at the Broadway nightclub in Norfolk, Virginia. Told you. Hosted by comedian Fat Baby. Special guest performances by Shafan Collier and Miss Parker. Get your tickets at Eventbrite or visit www.mzzparker.com. Hello. <laughs> tickets are going fast for this exclusive event. So get yours now on Eventbrite.com or by calling 757-359-3862. That's seven. New York City. Oh my God. Baby, when I tell you that the Queen's Supreme Court is bringing the seat to your city. And honey, we not just giving you one day, girl, we giving you a whole weekend, baby. Me, Funky Donna Ross, and the real Miss Sophia, baby. Child, we coming there for a two-day extravaganza. Girl, get on Eventbrite right now. www.eventbrite.com and get your motherfucking tickets, bitch. For Easter weekend, bitch, with the Queen Supreme Court. That's April 21st and April 22nd. Sunday, come have brunch with me and King David. And Monday, come on out and judge these cases at the live show, bitch. Listen, don't meet me there, bitch. Beat me there. <laughs> Juris, I need you to report and report now to the Dominican Republic. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Queen's Supreme Court is bringing the seat to the Dominican Republic. July 12th through the 16th, we are going on an all-inclusive food, drink, activities, and lodging, baby. To the Dominican Republic. Get your tickets on www.wetravel.com, baby. That's www.wetravel.com. Well, look for the link in the bio. But, child, honey, we are going to have an amazing time. Now, all you got to do is get your passport and get your plane ticket. We got everything else, girl. Tickets are available now. Don't waste no time, baby. Don't waste no time. Child, July 12th through the 16th, the Queen's Supreme Court in the Dominican Republic. Hold the car up.